help the boy get married. And he still relies financially on his parents. Interference happen in the relationship. You, my father, my earning is very little. I rely on you on many things. Then I get married. Definitely, if you supply and you help me, you will interfere. You will tell me what to do and what not to do. And I'm scared to tell you no, because at the end of the day, half of my monthly expenditure is in your hands. Therefore, Islam says you as parents also give your children freedom. Let them think. Let them decide on their family. Number two, immaturity causes interference. Immaturity how? You find this boy is not that mature to look after a woman. He's just been subjected to pressure for him to get married. So when he gets married, definitely he will rely on those who pressurize him to get married for advice. And that also causes a lot of problems. Number three, so utafahum. Misunderstanding. Maybe sometimes the father and the mother, they are advising him something, but the way he implemented it is something that he understands a different way. And that also causes misunderstanding within marriage. And it causes a lot of problems in our marriages. And the last one is that you find some of our mothers and fathers, even if their daughters and sons get married, they still think that it's mommy boy and mommy daughter. Where is your holiday this year? They tell me, this, you must go to South Africa. The wife said, no, I don't want to go to South Africa. I said, no, my mother said you must go to South Africa. Why you want to disrespect my mother? Baba, it's not disrespect. Don't interfere in their life. Every single person is entitled to privacy. Even if it's your daughter and your son, now they are married, they have to decide the way they want to do. Unless you see them going astray, Billah, going out of the way, give them space. Don't interfere too much. And it's causing a lot of problems in our nikah. Therefore, it is highly recommended. Even this is not like hadith, but scholars always recommend. If you have your son and the son is married and you have the capability, let the son stay somewhere far from you. Let him grow. Then later, if you want to bring him next to his final problem. Because you keep him under, he comes, the mom cook the food. Now you find the in-laws are fighting their in-laws, this in-laws, that one, in-law, that one, in-law. So in conclusion, Islam is a religion that gives intellect room to think. And most especially within our marital relationship. You as father-in-law, or as mother-in-law. Your son will remain your son until the day of Qiyamah. But the moment your son is married, you cannot interfere too much into their relationship. What they eat is none of your business. What they wear is none of your business. How they want to, their room to look like is none of your business. And you as a son also who is married, Learn to stop every small thing you want to call your mom and ask. Because you find some of the, the sons are like that. Small thing you want to call mommy. What do you do it? And stop telling your wife, my mother's food is the best food. These are some of the complaints we receive, so we need to. <laughs> ah, no, she doesn't know how to cook. You know, my, I, I really miss my mother's food. <laughs> now, if you tell this Miss Kina... This poor lady, <laughs> I miss my mother. What she would do, she would go in the corner of the room and cry. Keep on encouraging her, and she will encourage you. And inshallah, if your heart is clean, Allah wa ta'ala will make it easy for you, inshallah. <laughs>